It is time for my spooky sound check. Can you hear me? Is my microphone working? Help! Help! I'm trapped in the attic! I don't know what to do! Help me! Help me! I'm trapped! I've got a green screen behind me! It's terrifying in here! I'm, 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 I'm covered in random numbers! <laughs> and I don't know what to code! Whatever shall I do? Oh, it is spooky up here! Spooky! Spooky! It's an attic! Look! It's an attic where I am trapped! And I have lights! And a screen! And a microphone with my laptop! Ah, I am so scared! Please! 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 Help! 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 The, 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 the random numbers! They are taking over everything! I don't know how to count them. What, what, what shall I do? I don't know. 
<laughs> I didn't plan this very well. I need a script. <laughs> okay, back. <clears throat> oh, hello. <clears throat> it is me. Count Random Number. <laughs> Appearing live on the coding train. There was a train whistle that I usually have. Ah, I have found it. I will blow it. Ah, I will now read the random numbers to you. 32,015. 60,577. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, this, uh, <coughs> uh. 85,846 38,104 Seventy-eight thousand three hundred and ninety-one. I must go. I must go and collect the rest of the random numbers. <laughs> ha! They are falling off my costume, which makes it easier to read. <clears throat> Four hundred and seventy nine. Manthan asks, Is this live? No, this is not live. I recorded this and then watched it back and decided to broadcast it. No, this is definitely live because if it wasn't live, I'd have canceled this idea a very long time ago. Uh, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I think maybe I can. Um, Move on from my shtick here, which really, I want to thank Violet, by the way, who had the idea for the random number costume. This was thrown together, by the way, in the last 15 minutes. I asked all of my children, all of my children, all two of them, to, and one was very busy playing a, a, a baseball in Roblox, so I got the uh, just a few random numbers, but um, <laughs> uh, to make uh, a lot of random numbers on pieces of paper and stick them all over me, I found this old vampire robe or dracula robe that my son had used as a costume from years ago and so here we are um uh, <laughs> on a saturday <clears throat> okay okay simon is telling me the joke took way too long well i got news for you it's not going away anytime soon hmm. well how's everybody doing today it's Halloween. I know there's a lot of really complicated and difficult stuff going on around in the world. I hope if you are able to vote here in the United States um, that you... I, I early voted yesterday. I, I should put my early vote sticker on me, but please vote. Um, I encourage you to vote. Um, early voting was a wonderful experience to feel like I had the time and space and I got it done and, and everything. Uh, it was uh, a thank you to the New York City voting organization i forget what it's called new york city votes it was actually a very smooth experience i was offered empanadas and pizza while i was waiting in line i only had to wait about 30 to 45 minutes okay um now uh dr parul jane is telling me to please start i haven't uh, just just in case anybody's wondering these saturday live streams they tend to be a little um <clears throat> long-winded if you will and I get much less done than I might in a sort of shorter form actual coding tutorial. So if you're looking for a so-called proper educational experience, you know, you can come back later. One thing that I do, and thank you to Marcos, um, who's been helping me with this, is the um, YouTube has a feature now. If I put time codes in the description, it will chapterize, if that's a word, uh, chapterize the video. And so you can come back and watch it later and find the sections that actually have some coding stuff, if that's what you're more interested in. Um, all right, so what is the game called Roadblocks? Did I say Roadblocks? Roblox, excuse me. Um, all right, so, um, what am I? 
going to do today. <laughs> I have an idea. And one of the things I'm super excited about, and you saw it here, and let me try to get this back. Um, thanks to the stream professor. I don't know if any of you watch the stream professor's YouTube channel. I actually forgot what the actual name of it is. And I watch it all the time. Um, that there is, uh, I learned about how, and I'm going to just switch over to here. Um, I can use my uh, phone. I should probably just like have both of these going. Let's see. If you'll, if you'll bear with me for a moment, if I go back to here, or maybe if I go to here, um, no, no, here, no. Oh, let me just add it real quick. Oh, it's fine. I'll just go back to here. So I have a thing where I can uh, connect my phone. This I can't show it to you. I want to turn my other camera on. All right, I have an idea. Just bear with me for a second. Um, we're going to go back to... I, I'm going to... Uh, this is me producing the show during the show. That's a thing that I also do quite often. I'm going to go back to this view. I'm going to go into my open broadcast studio. I'm going to add another capture device. I'm going to add the Epoch cam. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I'm going to shrink it uh, and then I'm going to rotate it, transform, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. And there we go. So now I should be able to show you that what I am doing is I have my fancy iOS device here, which is there's no cables. It is wirelessly connected to the PC running my streaming computer. That's amazing. Um, and so I can do things like, uh, uh, ah, my random numbers are falling off. And you're seeing also the, the mess. Uh, I, like This is the messiest room in our house. I don't know if you can call it a room. It's an attic. Um, uh, I don't. I, I really want to like try not to show too much. There's like Barbie dolls all over the floor, and like giant uh, bins of Legos, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, paper, you know, just arts and crafts supplies everywhere. Um, let me switch for a second. Ah, so I have uh, this uh, book here, and if I do this and <laughs> switch here, I should be now showing you um, this pumpkin carving kit. So this was uh, the activity that's planned in my household for this afternoon. And I noticed that um, over at, in the book, it has these designs for uh, carving a pumpkin. And uh, my daughter in particular really wants to do this one, the side-eyed owl. Um, and you can see how it works. You tape over the pattern, you carve, and then you display. And I was thinking, couldn't we and maybe I should turn this off now. Uh, <laughs> um, what if I were to make, what if I were to make an algorithmic generative pumpkin carving design? <laughs> uh, that's what I was thinking of doing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Kate uh, Kastjan Vekman is pointing out that I only I said I only had to wait 30 to 45 minutes um, in Denmark. Uh, that is a very, very long time. I, from what I've been told, um, I've checked the line a few times. I live in Brooklyn. Um, I heard that Paul Rudd, by the way, was handing out cookies to people online in Brooklyn. But I, I think that was at the Barclays Center, which is not my location. Um, I heard people were waiting for hours, so... Um, <clears throat> okay, so what's happening here? So I, I wanted to do some Halloween themed fun things, uh, mostly because I have no idea what else to do. Uh, but first, let me offer up some coding train news. Coding train breaking news. So um, I have this YouTube channel. It's called The Coding Train. <laughs> And I'm going to go to it right now. Uh, if you didn't see um, already this uh, video that I released yesterday, it's coding challenge number 157. Uh, oh, you don't see this at all. Apologies. Oh, and my, what is going on here? The cam, the Epoch cam is on this screen. All right. Um, this here was the uh, video that I released um, <clears throat> Uh, two days ago, um, called Zoom Annotations with Machine Learning and P5JS. So um, I don't know how easy it is for somebody to follow. <laughs> I guess I just have to give up. I mean, 
I have more tape here. Let's let's take some extreme measures. Because I know everybody is just gifing and snapshotting this live stream and sharing it all over social media. And I really want um, a uh, I really want um, this random number to appear. Wait, I'm being told. I got a direct message that I now don't see. It popped up for a second. So if you have something to tell me about the stream, ah, there it is. Stream deck volume is low. I have no idea what that means. Do you mean my mic, my mic is low? Like I'm quiet? Because I don't know what stream deck is. <laughs> I don't use stream deck, whatever that is. Uh, I have lots of different audio feeds. I have music. I have my mic. Uh, here. This isn't going anywhere now. This is great. Okay. What was I talking about? Ah, I was wondering if this is actually something that people could follow and really implement. Or is it just like a cool demo that I did in a video and people aren't really going to be able to do stuff with it. So um, if you... <laughs> if you... Um, your sounds. All of my sounds. I need more specificity in my life. It's, it's much too general. I can't do anything with that. Everything is good. People are telling me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume uh, all of my audio levels are actually like my mic is in the red. It's showing me, which is not good when I speak very loud. And the laptop sounds um, are at a sort of medium volume, which I guess I could turn up a little bit. Um, yeah, so the music, the sound effects were very low. Got it. The music was so quiet all that time, but it was so... Good, all of my uh, Halloween music that I spent so long curating uh, this morning. Okay, so this particular Zoom Annotations video, if you happen to make something, a version of it, if you will, I would love for you to share it with me. Because I don't know if this is a thing that people could really actually do. And I think actually one of the things that I wanted to emphasize with this video, which I'm not sure that I did a particularly great job of, is that, um, and I should check the page. Let's check the page. I don't know why I went to the channel when I should be going to the website. Um, whoops, that's not also the channel again. Let me go to the website and go to the challenge here. This is, ah, it looks like, it seems like there haven't been made any variations based on this coding challenge by the community yet. Be the first and add your own. If you don't know how, take a look at this spooky guide. Oh, we should make a Chrome extension that just inserts the word spooky into websites everywhere. <laughs> That's what I should make today on the coding train. Um, so uh, nobody's, con you could be the first, you could be the first person. This is a little tricky because I'm not actually asking you to share your code necessarily. What I would love for you to do is create maybe a GIF or a short video that just screen records you in a Zoom meeting. Again, don't record other people in a Zoom meeting unless you have their permission. Um, so just uh, do a test meeting with just yourself or just bl uh, cut out the part that you're in it and show how you're interacting with people in your Zoom meeting through this methodology that's in the video. But what I wanted to mention is even though the demonstration is all about overlays to your actual video, what I'm really showing you is that anything you can make on your computer um, that you can, uh, and, and any layout that you can create in Open Broadcast Studio, you can, um, <clears throat> you can pipe that into your Zoom call. So it doesn't actually have to be traditional video. It could just be like, like text. Like I actually was in a Zoom meeting the other day that had the community agreement, um, which was just a, a, a document that was sort of laid out on one page as the video feed of one of the um, participants in the meeting. So, but something more creative and abstract you could do. <laughs> Krabby asks, oh wait, is it Halloween right now? <clears throat> in case you were wondering, it is indeed. And by the way, I, so I, I have um, an account with one of these like uh, royalty free um, audio services. Um, where I get music and stuff from. <laughs> I just download, it's Epidemic by the way. Um, and I just download, I should also mention by the way, I sort of, I'm a little late in doing this right now, but this uh, this uh, live stream is sponsored by Brilliant. <laughs> Spooky. 
pretty brilliant. Um, I will in a little while uh, go and do one of the daily challenges from Brilliant. If you're not familiar with Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash coding train and sign up for free. And if you're interested in math and science and learning and interactive exercises and computer programming, there's tons of puzzles and courses and things there. It's all interactive. So unlike video tutorials, which is what I do on YouTube, it's really a place that you can do on your own time through reading and interactivity. I, I really love the site. So um, and you can sign up for free. You can get a premium subscription to unlock everything. And through that link, you uh, the first 200 people get a 20% off coupon. All right. So back to uh, regularly scheduled programming, which is me. Uh, ah, and Powery, let's, Powery's asking me about the wallpaper. So um, I do make these available. Let's uh, let's go. I, I, I forget where this is, like the actual place this is. Um, but I'm going to go to the GitHub repo for the website. I don't know why I'm not signed in here. And I'm going to search. I'm so lost on GitHub. So I'm search under issues. This is so weird that why am I not signed in? I want to be signed in because the search bar is gone. Wallpaper. Let's hold on. Let's just see. Wallpaper coding train. There we go. So in this particular issue, and I believe this might've got resolved further along than, oh yeah, there's an FAQ on the site somewhere. No, oh, you don't even see what I'm showing you on the worst uh, on this FAQ uh, uh, site. Uh, I don't know where that is. Okay, there's this link here on this page, issue number 404, which goes to this Google Drive folder and under here under wallpaper. Um, the Halloween one is right here. Catch a ride Halloween. I also would encourage you to check out this very new catch a mask. Um, and uh, I like this one that uh, that was that Jason put together to put masks on the characters. And um, yeah, so you can grab those. Um, I think that I have some information somewhere. Uh, license. What does this say? Uh, the Coding Train characters were created by uh, Jason Hegland, and they're available for use under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. So certainly, um, if you're just using it for your own personal use, uh, that is great. If you are using them and in something that you are publishing, um, then you should probably provide attribution and make sure you're not like selling them on t-shirts and that kind of thing. Whatever's in that license, just to mention. Okay. Uh, and I, I don't know how to do this stuff the correct way. I'm trying to wade my way through having a very open working process, um, but also keeping things protected and ethical. And so I'm uh, definitely your feedback is well appreciated for how I can make the code and the content of the coding train more accessible for you in ways um, that works. Does Brilliant have the new design today? So I know I was told by Brilliant that their website is being redesigned for November and it's in the materials that I'm, that I'm telling you about, <laughs> but maybe the site has the new design today because it is October 31st. All right. Where was I? I think we need to start off, especially since today I am your friendly count random number. Ah, 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 ah. Count random number. Uh, uh, uh. We should do some random number reading. So how do I get to the random number reading? The first thing that I do, it's already 1025. Uh, time flies when you're wasting time live streaming to an international audience of hundreds, I suppose is the correct term. By the way, I'm told there is another live stream. Somebody could, there's like a math or math magic live stream going on today that's 24 hours. That's probably what you should be watching right now. If somebody could uh, just post a link to that in the chat, send people away to there, it's going to be a much more productive use of your time. I'm almost certain. All right. I'm trying to do something very important, um, which is, uh, no, uh, get to the Coding Train Discord, get to the links channel. Uh, and in a moment, I'm going to show you. Ah! I cannot you operate a computer it is very it is so scary. Mm. There we go. Okay, so what uh, this is really bothering me this epoch cam thing. Let me just click that. All right. Um 
So this is the Coding Train Discord. In other uh, breaking news, I won't play the sound effect again. Three intro to Discord bot tutorials are coming to you on the Coding Train uh, next week. They are basically almost finished. I also recorded a new tutorial on using uh, a convolutional neural network in ML5.js. That is coming to you soon. So four videos are on the way, tutorial videos coming your way. But I encourage you to join the Coding Train Discord. V new, very new is if you, uh, uh, I just posted the invite into the chat, but brand new is thecodingtrain.com slash discord. So if you go to the codingtrain.com slash discord, that will take you automatically, uh, redirect you to the invite page. Uh, so I encourage you to just find it that way. I should update my link. Um, and can somebody post the link to the, somebody who's in, has, has admin privileges, can you post a link to the wallpapers in the YouTube chat? Um, but again, you'll find it if you go to... Uh, the coding train website github repo issue number four four seven. You got to do it's coming. Kind of, you got to got to work a little bit here. You don't just get the link. You got to go on a adventure, a spooky, a spooky adventure. Navigate your way to issue number four four seven. Okay. Um, <laughs> And I'm, uh, I'm looking at the chat, too much going on. Um, all right, so speaking of, the reason why I came over here to the Discord is this is where I am. I am, all, I'm, I, am I have a very important project that I'm doing, which is I am attempting to read this entire book. A Million Random Digits. Um, and it is by the Rand Corporation, also included as a bonus, 100,000 normal deviants. And as of last live stream, I was on row 10. I'm also still on the first page. This is going to take, gotta, this is going to take, I don't, I got to, uh, this is going to take a long time. I don't think that I will finish it in my lifetime, if I'm being honest. I mean, how much longer am I really going to be doing this live streaming nonsense? <laughs> I don't know. This might be my last one, everybody. It's over after this. There's a link in the FAQ. Violet, where's the FAQ? I don't know where even where the FAQ is. I know we worked on it. And it, um, anyway, I'm going to page one. I'm going to page one of a million random digits. I'm going to row 10. And the next random number, I remember this now, the next random number is uh, column two. Um, and so I can actually show this to you if I bring up my Epoch cam again. Let's see if I can make this work. Um, it's going to take a minute to connect. All right, here we go. So I am on row 10, column 0, 1, 2. So this is the first random number that I need to read. Let's try, actually... Um, nah, I, 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 no, I was going to say, so this is at 14,905. That's where I need to read. I'm going to go back to this view here and count random number. We'll now read from the book, A Million Random Digits. <clears throat> what's the best way, what's the best look here for me? Is it this? <laughs> so you can see the cover. Uh, and then I need some uh, music here. 14,905. Ha, ha, ha. No, I don't, I don't like this one. That's pretty good. Let's go with this one. <clears throat> 68,607. Ha, 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 ha. 22,109. 40,558. Ha 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 ha. 60,970. Ha 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 ha. 93,443. Ha 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 ha. 73,998. 65,400. And 81. Oh, I went to the wrong row again. No, 11,805. 5,431. 39,808. 
Okay, so I have finished up on row 12, column 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 12 and 5. 12 and 5. All right, I will post the link to the wallpaper. Uh, I see that people are really interested in that. 12, uh, row 12, ah, column 5. Is that what I said? Row 12, no, row 12 and column 5. So uh, here we are. Uh, next random number. Row 12, column 5. So that is there in Discord. And then let me grab that wallpaper link for folks. So where is the FAQ? First link under the more drop down. So if I go to here, more under frequently asked questions. Ah, okay, look at this. It's the coding train frequently asked questions. <laughs> I should know that that's there. <sighs> um, okay, look at all these answers to these commonly asked questions. Uh, and here we go. Where can I download the coding train wallpapers? Um, and so the link right here, shared Google Drive with, and there's a lot more than just the wallpaper. I don't think everything is here um, because there's a lot of new stuff being generated all the time. Um, and I would like to highlight something for you that's super fun that I'm working on. Um, let me just pull it up. I'm, that's why I'm moving my screen away for a second. If I go into uh, rewards and uh, here, um, I'm going to open this image and bring it back to you now. Um, this is something I'm working on, which is a laser etched uh, coding train train whistle and this is one of the rewards for people who join as a member and I know you can't see me um, So, I, you know, this has taken almost over a, I, it might be even more than a year now that I sort of like said that I would be sending these to people So apologies for that delay progress is being made and the thing that I'm looking to do is so it will have the coding train train on it and then if you're a member you get your own personalized random number I need a system for tracking those. That's a, definitely a project that I should build. Uh, oh, my numbers are falling all off of me. Um, numbers. Um, and um, the, my idea is that on one of the other sides, you would have your random number laser etched on it. And then a design, that probably a random walk is what I'm thinking right now, where the seed for that re that design was generated with your random number. So you might have noticed I'm a little bit cr insane here in my obsession with randomness and random numbers. But that to me now I feel like is the essence of the coding train itself. Sure, there's the train theme, there's P5GS, there's me, there's coding characters, but ultimately, the theme, the real essence is random numbers. Where do they come from? What comes next after one random number? But everything I do is full of chaos and randomness with no plan. Random, the random function is probably the most function that I use in my programming uh, examples and tutorials. It's everywhere. And it's just like your starting point, I think, for this idea of creativity, expression with code. Like there's so much more than you can do than randomness, but it's kind of like, this is where we all get started. 
ah, I learned how to make a shape. I learned how to make a color. Let's try making a random one. And so that to me, I kind of like, it's all coming together. It all makes sense to me now here on the coding train. Uh, but let's, I got to work on something today because it is Halloween and I want to make a Halloween project. So my idea was um, a, uh, oh, and Frank in the chat is saying that they did their senior paper on random numbers in college. I would love to read that. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, you know, and I'm curious. Uh, join the Discord and please share, uh, Frank. That sounds really awesome. And I know that many of you are students right now. I hope you're doing okay school-wise um, and that the coding train is helping you out in your educational journey. Um, if there are things that I can do to be more helpful, um, please let me know. All right, so um, just give me a second here to get back to something. Let's go to the P5 web editor, I guess, um, and go, uh, I just wanna open up the Discord um, and go back to, where am I looking? I wanna go to the links channel, there it is. Okay, wow, usually when I'm live streaming and I post something here, it's just filled with emojis. And yet somehow today, I uh, only got two thumbs up with all the emojis. And come on, people. I'm, I'm, I've got the power. No, not all. You know, let's be nice. Let's un remove all reactions, reactions, all ad re uh, Do I have to remove them all? Or this, what will this do? Yes. See, you ruined it for everybody else. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> now, uh, here we are in the web editor. Let's log in. So once again, my idea, pumpkin carving designs. So what can I add to what already exists? By the way, is this, why is this being chroma keyed? Look at that. It's like chroma keying out this book. That is wacky. Um, so, um, <laughs> um, let me see here. Sorry, 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 everybody. So what can I add to the discourse on jack-o'-lantern designs? Um, one idea that somebody had was, um, and Krabby says there's lots of new reactions. Oh, amazing, beautiful Krabby. I love that, thank you. Um, I love your username, by the way, Krabby. <laughs> well, where does it come from? Okay, um, one of the things that um, I'm thinking about here is, and a lot of people, is what kind of designs <clears throat> that I've done either in um, any of my coding challenges or in um, any of the coding in the Cabana videos could work for a jack-o'-lantern design. So on the one hand is the idea that like somebody out there, like the nerdiest of the jack-o'-lantern carvers just wants to put the Hilbert curve. So in the one sense, like what am I adding here? Because it's just a matter of like mm, opening this sketch, and, like making it black and white and screenshotting it and printing it. That's basically all you need to do. But is there something that I could possibly, um, um, is there something that I could possibly do that's new, um, but also isn't just what you would sort of ordinarily do and allow people to customize it in some way? So what's up, so I need your help here. And I'm looking at the YouTube space filling pumpkin. That's right, space filling pumpkin. That's Hilbert curve is a space filling curve. So I'm looking for ideas for things. And while I'm getting started, while you're thinking of those things, and if folks in the uh, Discord chat, the, the members uh, live chat, if you could pull any ideas that you see in the YouTube chat um, and bring them into there, let's, uh, let's accumulate them there. And so one of these days, thank you to Distream chat. I will, I like to plug uh, Distream chat. Is this gonna like come up? Is it just distreamchat.com? It is, um, which is uh, the uh, chat manager and Discord bot 
uh, for the coding train. Um, it mostly works with Twitch when I'm on YouTube. Um, but uh, the reason I was going to say this is that they're, they're working on a new feature, which will allow me to collect some comments and like feature them on the screen. Um, but I don't have that ready yet, but that would be, that would be great for this. But for now, the butterfly wing generator, that's a, that's an interesting one. How can we make that Halloween themed? doesn't need to be. I saw some pretty great, um, I mean, here where I live in Brooklyn, everybody's got like super creative uh, pumpkins. I'm trying to think. I saw an Among Us character. Um, there was there was something that was. I mean, maybe just one with like random numbers on it, <laughs> dripping random numbers, dripping blood. Ooh, that's kind of. Oh, what if we did like a dripping blood effect on a random number? So it would be like spooky random numbers. Um, how would I even do that? Um, like, I know that I could say something like, you know, let's pick, what's the random number that's on my hat? Oh, I really don't want to show my terrible hat hair. 30479. <laughs> uh, 30479, and I could say, uh, put it in the middle. And I could say, uh, text align center. And I haven't shared any community contributions, which I should do today if I can. Uh, fill, let's make it just red right now. And text size uh, 64. What do I get? Well, that's not red, that's green. So I could do something where, I think it could be twice the size, where I take this number and I, <laughs> Blobby pumpkins, that's an interesting idea. A spooky impossible maze. Oh, that's a fun idea also. Uh, I should. I really should get that live poll thing going and then people could vote on the things. But I haven't merged any of the recent poll requests and gone through it, so I don't have enough time. I, I probably need to be doing this full time, frankly. Which I don't, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> I could live stream every day, get a lot of, lot of stuff done. Uh, make it drip blood, right, so this is what I'm thinking. Um, so you could get a random number, it, uh, it could, it could do like a random walk design with that random number that I could do what I'm saying, basically. What if we made a spooky random number design that does something generative that's seeded with that random number? Jump scare maze. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, yeah, obviously I'm going to, uh, at some point people are suggesting that I'm going to make this an actual random number, but right now I'm just, um, hard coding in a number. What was I saying here? Text plotting dots with small pumpkins. Um, very interesting. So let's, um, spooky number is 404. <laughs> let's see if we can do some image processing to this. Cause I think that'll be fun. This is, in some ways this might be more appropriate for processing. Um, but I wanted to have this as a web application that people could run. So I guess I'll, because I, I like doing the pixel processing stuff more in processing, but let's let's do what I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm going to show you something if you're not aware. Okay, let's <laughs> give up. Hold on. It's time for extreme measures here. I really got to go at like... A little afternoon today because there's a lot of exciting, fun Halloween stuff happening in my household. Um, this is definitely how I should. Yet, yeah, right, create the numbers from a bunch of particles. So not applicable. This is exactly what I'm thinking of. Thank you for this. So this is what I'm gonna. We're gonna try to make spooky random numbers, and that's the thing you can carve into your pumpkin. And I don't know if it's actually going to get carved into. My kids have very specific ideas about what they want to carve. <laughs> so what I what I want to show you here is that um, what I need to do is create a separate uh, canvas, a graphics object. So I'm going to just call this numbers, and I'm going to say numbers equals create graphics 400 400, and then I'm going to do all of this stuff on this graphics object. So create graphics is a really excellent trick in P5 for doing all sorts of things with layering, with uh, backgrounds, with mixing, with image processing. I can basically create 
a entirely separate graphics context, which I draw onto in any way that I want. So if I do this and then run this code, let me see, how much room do I really have here for you to see the code and the output? So I don't see anything right now. And I, can I make the font a little bit smaller? It looks like I can. Is this like zoomed in? Oh, it's zoomed in. No wonder. It looked like crazy to me. Um, all right. This is how I prefer to do it. Uh, 36 is good. There. There we go. All right. So I don't see anything. So why do I not um, see anything? The reason why I don't see anything is I drew all this stuff to a separate graphics context that's just in memory. Now, I could... Um, I could draw that now. So now it looks like a regular old P5 sketch and I, I just please, uh, uh, I, something's very spooky is happening. My nose, it feels like it's running in the middle of a live stream. I will be right back. Enjoy, enjoy the No matter what I do, this random number, it's cursed. It's cursed. I put so much tape on it. It won't stay on my head. But I have Kleenex. I will mute myself. All right, so, um, wow, this is really playing for a long time. Um, one idea that I have is to go to the, uh, fr is it called Fractal Flame? No, no, that's something else. That's something that I'm working on that I let totally I drop the ball on. Uh, flames, coding challenge, coding train. One possibility would actually be to use, oh, the fire effect, use this. Do I have a P5 version of it? So this is a coding challenge I did from years ago, years ago, no, not too long ago, which creates this kind of effect. Um, and so, uh, and it's being seeded by this noise field. And I, if I recall correctly, I could use sort of the text numbers in this field. And then I would sort of see like those, uh, those numbers like on fire. So that's one way that I could approach this. If anybody wants to like work on that right now <laughs> behind the scenes, uh, share it back with me, I could use that. But I think I want to just go with a more traditional approach that I, that with particle, the particle system, but this would be a nice one to do. Um, you know, I could then marching squares this to make it like sort of contour, more contour-ish. But I also really like the idea of uh, carving my face, not my face, but your face into a pumpkin. So that I, that I have an idea for how I could also show today if I can do that. But let's keep going with this. So the idea now is instead of just drawing those numbers, and let's make this a little bit wider. Um, and let's put, I don't think that that's really matters so much. I want the numbers to actually just be um, color I'm gonna be able to set in my own way. So, and I want them to be, Oh, why did they? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, the graphics object needs to be, yeah, sorry, uh, bigger. Okay. And then I, I want them to sit at the bottom of the window. So I think maybe that means I want to do this. So I have this idea. Oh, no, they're dripping. So they should be at the top. So the top. And then I guess if the font size is 128, that means I just want to put them there. I guess there's a little bit of like... You know, I could figure this out more exactly, but <laughs> this is how I like to code. Ah, okay. Let's be a little bit more extreme here. All right, perfect. So I wanna make those drip. So the way, the idea that I have for the way to do that is not to actually display them, but first, let me just loop through all of the pixels of that image. So if I start with X, 
to the uh, numbers width. And I, I the, the, the width of the image and the width of the canvas is always gonna be the same, I think. I'm gonna skip every 10 pixels for now just to make this demonstration work. Tell me if I'm like blocking the code too much. Like, do I need to move this? Oh, I probably should move this over a tiny bit. Yeah, um, then I need to do Y. Then uh, I need to find the index for each pixel. And in P5, the formula for that is X plus Y times width times four. So this is the, the, for every pixel in the pixel array, there's RGB alpha. So there's width times height times four pixels. And then I can just say the red value is numbers, pixels, uh, index. And I'm going to say if R is greater than, uh, than zero, because I know the exact pixel values, they're black and white. So if the red value is greater than zero, I just wanna draw a circle right at that X and Y location um, and let's make it red. Eventually I'm gonna make this a particle, maybe I'll texture it, but let's just see if this draws the number. Oh, and I probably have to say numbers load pixels. Um, so Krabby posted something from Reddit, but there's no way I can read that right now. So I might need the, uh, the, the summary of what that is. So let's say load pixels. There we go. Oh, so already this is looking pretty good. So you can see that I'm able to draw the numbers to an image and I feel like I need more pixel space. Now, certainly I could, uh, so let's let's have a, um, a step size, a step, I'm gonna say that's 10. And for right now, just to sort of understand um, how this is this looks, let's say no stroke. Feel like I want to have a larger area to work with, um, but I have limited screen space right now, just in terms of, um, and let's just make this, do my 51 background so I can see it. Whoa, what just happened there? Oh, the background is 51. Oh, I has to be trans, ah. So then I would have to say greater than, it's, no, yeah, no, 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 the background. Oh, I need to do a background here. This is what I meant to do. I also need a background for the actual uh, canvas. I just wanna be able to see the size of the canvas. There we go. So I think with, I, I guess maybe what I want actually is the opposite. I wanna have more room for the blood to drip. Whoa, this is going crazy now when they don't match. There we go. So that's gonna be my starting point. And I need more room for the code, so this can go over to here. And then I'm just curious to try like a step size of four. Um, and if we zoom in and look at this, yeah, I think that's gonna kind of get me what I want. Okay, so now instead of these being just dots, I wanna create particles um, that are sort of like falling but with a lot of like friction like dripping uh, somehow dripping so i don't actually have any idea how i'm going to make this work but i think i probably rather than code all of this from scratch right now i should go to like one of my nature of code particle system examples so um where's the best place for me to do that i guess if i go to github.com nature of code um and i go to examples p5js and I go under, oops, not oscillation, under systems. And I, I um, uh, and I don't know, what's the single particle force? I think this is kind of what I'm looking for. I mean, in a way, I don't think I need to overcomplicate this and I just need the particle class. So let me grab this code. This is very, very little code actually. Um, and let's, ooh, this, I'm gonna stop this one. I, I, this would actually be really cool to try. I should, if I have time, I want to come back to this one. Um, and then uh, I'm going to go here. Um, and I need to add a particle, particle.js file. Whoops. No, no. Did you not add a file? Create file, particle.js. And. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to paste that in here. Uh, and then uh, I need to reference it. Now is where I can move this over because, okay, so here we go. Now in the sketch, I'm now going to have uh, particles, an array. Uh, um, this doesn't need to be drawn every time, right? This is just being rendered once at the beginning. Honestly, I should just like load an image, but it's nice that the code is doing it because it could be a different number each time. Um, okay, and then uh, let's just 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 to be a clear uh, push. I don't know what this is going to do. Let's add a new particle um, at one hundred, uh, three hundred, four hundred, and I don't remember what this code does. Um, let's say for every particle of particles, uh, particle dot show uh, particle dot update. I'm just making this up. I'm guessing what that object did from the example a background of undefined oh this create graphics has to happen before i start drawing to it uh, i've got some other error now position dot copy is not a function particle line nine what oh what Ugh. i prefer to do it this way so to pass in an X and Y, there we go. Now I still have show is not a function. Run, update, display. I'm just gonna change the names, okay. All right, so that's what this does. It makes, uh, I've just made 100 particles that fall with gravity. Okay, this works. Uh, yeah, and Krabby is writing, I know nothing about constructors or classes. So if this is new to you, uh, might I suggest... <laughs> hey, are you new to the coding train? Is this your first day watching? Well, guess what? I don't usually wear a cape with random numbers on it. But also, you can learn to code from the coding train yourself on your own time with my tutorial series... Under Beginners, P5JS. I'm actually hoping to update some of these videos in 2021 because some of them are a little bit out of date. But might I suggest to you, scrolling down here and especially for what I'm doing right now, you'll want to take a look at Introduction to OOP with ES6. ES6 is the version of JavaScript from 1972. That's how up to date I am in my JavaScript programming. Uh, you can also watch <laughs> Uh, classes in JavaScript with ES6, constructor arguments with classes in JavaScript, and then you can even, in the P5JS web editor, add your own JavaScript file. And then you can travel back in time and learn about what an array is, all the way back to 2015. Oh, it was a simpler time in 2015. Look how little gray hair I had. I didn't wear capes or glasses or hats. I just talked about the rays. I even used some strange P5 desktop editor. Anyway, back to what I was working on now. Thanks for tuning in today. That's all I've got. Show's over, people. I'm done. Never coming back again. It's all over. I have some coffee here. All right, hopefully that helps somebody out. Um... <clears throat> I had to do that because nobody's joined as a member during this live stream. <laughs> uh, all right. Now, what was I doing? Where was I? Yes. So those are the particles. Now, here's what I would like to do. I'm going to take this loop here and just to sort of see what might happen, let us instead of drawing a circle here put a particle at this x and y so let me run this so all the particles are going to originate at the number location um what happened step is not defined well, i don't know how i lost that um let step equals a four 
There we go. So we can see I'm on my way, right? What happens? I see that number and then all these particles fall. This is one of the reasons why I might like to work in processing. Also, it's gonna run quite slow, but ultimately if the goal is to render out an image, there's some other possibilities here. So uh, let's change this to, um, <clears throat> Um, let's change this to um, a red color. And let's actually say no stroke. Let's change this to red. Let's run this again. Okay, whoa, why? Okay, and now I definitely need to um, set the background back to black. That's perfect. Um, what just happened here? Why do I not see the particles? Something, I did something wrong in the rendering of them. Oh, 25, <laughs> 255, please. There we go. All right, so this is getting somewhere. Um, so, um, okay. All right, so now I think I wanna do something different, which is, I actually just wanna keep track of a list of spots. And I am going to say, instead of making a new particle, I'm gonna say spots equal uh, push, create vector x, y. So I just wanna, and, and maybe the step size actually doesn't need to be uh, four, it can be one here. Because I'm just gonna keep track of all of the possible spots where a particle could start. And then I can pick a random one and say particles push spot.x spot.y. Well, this is why I should have kept it the other way, but that's fine. All right, so now I think if I run this, spots is an array, spots push create vector, random spot, spot, what did it not like here? Particle.show is not a function? What? Oh, because, Oh, new particle, new particle. I have to make a new particle at that spot. There, okay. So now I'm making a new particle. So a couple things. One is I don't, this physics is not right for blood dripping. So in the particle, I don't, it shouldn't have an initial velocity. Its initial velocity can just be zero, zero. And the gravity is fine, but blood as it's dripping doesn't speed up really. It's a much slower, it's sort of like it reaches a terminal dripping sort of amount, I would say fairly quickly. <laughs> uh, so, and maybe it doesn't, it shouldn't fade out. It should leave more of a trail. I wonder if actually, I'm just curious, what would, this is probably going to look terrible. If I put the background in setup, yeah, that's, this is more like what I'm going for, <laughs> but um, can I, I, that's actually surprised me just now uh, that that worked. Could I fade out the background over time? So again, it's speeding up too much. I need to give it like an air resistance, I suppose. I think probably an easy way for me to do this in update, where's the update method? is just to say this dot velocity multiply, like just take 5% off the velocity every frame. So I want them to be more stuck. Although they don't, I suppose, maybe it should be like a random amount. It's more like dripping but their lifespan should be maybe much longer. Attach them with springs. Shouldn't the fade be in reverse? That's an interesting idea. So I'm not seeing that. So one thing that I really need to do, first of all, these particles should be much smaller. Um, ellipse 12. So let's give it a size. Um, and let's just say uh, this dot R times two. So that's the radius, and actually it's like the radius two. Um, and then, again, this isn't exactly going exactly right. I think let's make 
you know, 10 particles per frame. I just need a lot more. We'll definitely improve things. There we go. All right. So I'm kind of getting there, but really it just looks like a particle-y mess. So I think that actually they should probably have a small chance of dripping. Like they don't all drip. People are telling me that CSS filters. They fade in. Um, so Anurag, that's a great suggestion, but I think I want to try to do this without CSS just because I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> I would love for somebody to contribute an idea like that. Mm. So, all right, I need to take a short break. Um, so um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, this is like a good start. Uh, what I would, uh, what I would, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this link to this sketch right now, uh, here. So, uh, if you, when I take the break, um, if you want to like play around with it a little bit and if anybody like, also I should just limit the velocity that not multiply it. That's Simon said, that's a good idea. If people want to like, uh, mess with it a little bit and give me some tips of how I could make it more blood dripping like, um, another thing could be just to actually, it might make sense for me to draw. Um, you know, I wonder if actually like overlaying the dots on that image, and of course it needs to be red. Um, might actually like improve the dripping equality to it. Again, this is like off. Uh, I need it to be much more streaky. Maybe it should be faster and fade out faster. I don't know. Each particle deposits a small amount, decrease the particle's radius. Ah, that's a very interesting idea. I like that idea. So um, I'm gonna, I, I just, I'm saving this sketch. Um, you can play around with it and I will look for your tips. But I very, very briefly want to thank today's sponsor of the live stream. Um, and that is my friends over at Brilliant. So, uh, do you want to look? Oh, wait, I said two should be spooky about brilliant today. Do you want to learn something new? Something spooky and new? Brilliant is the place to do it. I, I think maybe I won't do my shtick uh, when talking about brilliant. So I, 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 I love brilliant. It's one of the websites that I use to try to find a lot of material for the coding train. Um, it, their approach is based on problem solving and active learning. So you're seeing concepts visually and interacting with them and then answering questions that get you to think. And they have a lot of wonderful um, courses. So here I'm showing you, um, this is highly related to a lot of the tutorials that are on my channel right now. There's a whole uh, course about neural networks. And in fact, the next video that I'll be releasing is about training an image classifier um, with the ML5JS convolutional neural network. And if you go through the brilliant course on neural networks, that is the perfect foundation or complement to the stuff that I'm doing. There's also this new course that I've talked about in uh, previous times around um, infinity. Um, and so um, this is one that I really love. It relates to like all sorts of fractal patterns and things that I've been looking at. I mean, reckoning with infinity is one of the major accomplishments of mathematics. So this course, it starts you with basic counting, ah, 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 and you work all the way up to many different kinds of infinity, culminating in the profundity of Cantor's theorem. So I've done a lot of stuff with fractals. But the other thing that I should mention is that um, there are big updates coming to Brilliant uh, this month. It's October 31st. A lot of them might already be there, but they'll certainly be there if you ch um, as the month, as the month, as the date transitions into November. Um, so stay tuned for updates. Um, and I think what I would like to do, which I always enjoy taking a minute to do on the stream, and let me come back to here, is go to the Brilliant website and check out what today's um, challenge is. And actually, this is one of those days where I have not done this in advance because I was very busy getting my costume together this morning. Usually I look at the challenge before I start. And this is a Calc Doku puzzle. What is a I mean, I assume it's like Sudoku. Fill the squares with a single digit each with the following rules. Each of the digits one through three is used exactly once, okay? Oh, it's three by three, so you get to use one through three. A marked region. Has anybody done a puzzle like this before? I gotta get the chat back open. I'm not seeing it right now. Um, Simon is saying that his favorite 
course is the one on search engines. That's not one that I've looked at. I definitely am curious to check that out. Um, <clears throat> Um, if you're interested in search engines, I might also really recommend reading the book Algorithms of Oppression by Dr. Safiya Noble. A fantastic book around uh, the sort of history and politics of search engines. Um, I really recommend it. I was in a book club over the summer. Loved that book. Um, okay. In the example below, the region marked 7 plus must be filled. So, hold on. Keep reading. So 7 plus must be filled with. Oh, so 2 and 3 have to go here. No, no. 1, 2, 3. So you get seven, oh, one can't go here. So one has to go here. Oh, I can't do it because it's stepping me through the solution. Three goes there, two, two. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I could do two twice. So two can't go here because it would be in the same line or column. Got it, got it, got it, got it. It's not one, two, three in here. It's in the line. Okay, okay. I think I get it. Today's challenge. Oh, no, I hate these. I really find these difficult. How many solutions does this puzzle have? So I guess I have to work on solving it. And Sai in the chat is saying use a viscous force. Yeah, I do have a whole section in the nature of code on, and I bet you there's a brilliant course on this, on drag force. Um, and so uh, let me, let's, I, I'll come back to that, but let me, um, let me try this. Okay. So if there's a two here, and this, this has to be four with multiplication, so the only way I can get four is four times one times one or two times two times one, right? But I can't do two times two because no, so this, so it has to be, oh, and then the four has to go here. The one has to go here and the one has to go there. Right. Okay. Uh-oh. Help me out, folks. What do I do next? Um, two minus. So I could get two minus three minus one. I can't do that. Four minus two, I can't do that. So it has to be five minus three, which means a four has to go there. Aha, uh -huh. right? Okay, that's good, moving along here. Is there anything, I don't wanna deal with the 72. This is like one number, what do I do with that? It's just any number? Mm. All right, maybe I do wanna deal with the 72. How would I get set? Oh, by the way, this is kind of related to, I was helping my son with his sixth grade math and he was doing prime factorization. So what's the prime factorization of 72? Uh, two times two times two times three. Is that right? <laughs> or four times three? Or three times three times four times two? <laughs> it's so hard to do this in my head. 72. Nine, I think I've got to use a nine here, right? Nine times four is 36 times two is 72. Yeah, so two threes. So the two threes and the two, the two can't go here and the threes have to go either here or here. Mm. The two can't go here. The two, the three, this has to be two threes and two twos. Is that what I'm saying? Or a four and a one, but I can't do a four and a one. What did I just say? Three times three is nine times, no, no, three, three, four, two. So the four can't go here, the four has to go here. And the two can't go here. So am I right in saying that the two has to go here and the four has to go here and these are threes and threes? No, because this could be switched. But I can't, or could I switch these two also? Right, this is not right. Someone's gonna tell me, uh, right, three times three. There's obviously more that I, uh, and then a two would have to go here, right? This kind of makes sense. Well, this is one possibility, but are there other, did I, I might've jumped the gun here. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is hard. <laughs> this is very spooky. Where do the numbers go? Oh. Oh. There's only one possibility for the threes. All right, so it says K weak months. Let me figure that out. Right, because what happens if I put the threes here? I can't put a four. Ah, oh, yeah, I can't put a four here and I can't put a two there. So perfect. Thank you. 
three threes. Now, if I've done that, then the four has to go here and the two has to go here. And then that means a five has to go here. Okay? Um, so I think... Oh, and uh, this is this is not a five goes here. Yeah, a five goes there. Okay, I think this is the only possibility. Now, what else do I know? So nine plus. How do I get to nine? Four, four plus. It has to be. It have to be unique numbers. So I can't do four plus five. It has to be four plus three plus two. So a three has to go here, and a two has to go here. Okay, I'm getting there. 4 divided by, 4 divided by 1 is a possibility. No, yeah, or that's it. That's the only way I can get 4, right? 4 divided by 1. So this has to be a 4 and this has to be a 1. 6 plus, 4, 3, 2. So I only have 5 and a 1. So this has to be a 5 and this has to be a 1. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, and now I know this has to be a 1, and this has to be a 3. Okay! Cooking with gas, people. <laughs> uh, yeah. The numbers. What do they mean? I'm so scared of them! Um, all right, so to get 10... Oh, to get, let's do 40 has to have five in it. Five, wait, a three, is that gonna work for the 40? To get four, let's think about how I'm gonna get 40. Five times three is 15. Something's wrong here. This doesn't seem right. Hold on. Uh, do I have something wrong? Oh, this could be this way. Yeah, this could be this way. Uh, I'm still unique everywhere. Okay, so I think actually I just discovered why this has to be... Oh, no, 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 hold on. But there's a four there. So it has to be four and one. One, something is wrong. Can this be a three and this, ah. I think it has to be like this because this has to be a four in order for me to say a five. The only way to get 40 is five times two and I need a five and a two here. So I made a mistake somewhere, but I think I've got it now. <laughs> I made a mistake. Yeah, you can't get a 40 with a three. So <laughs> five times four times two. Okay, so this has to be a five, but these can be in either place right now, right? The five can be in either place. 2 minus 5 and 3. So 5 and 3, 5 and 2. Those both work. But 3 and 5 and 2 and 5 both work. And so let's say if I did this, uh, then the 2 would go here for 10 plus. Wait, no. 10 plus? Oh, but I have a 5 there. So 2 and a 3. No, something's wrong. Oh, wait. Two and three. No. Two and five. Oh, there we go. So that's a solution. <laughs> that is a solution. So I got a solution. The question is, are there more? I think that I can swap these. Three and five, two and five, three and two. Yeah, okay, that's two solutions. There's definitely two. Five and two, five and three. Two and five in the middle column. Oh, these can be swapped? No. Oh, these can be swapped. Two and five. Is that another? Oh, no, 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 no. I can't swap it vertically. Uh, there's definitely two solutions. I think there's more, right? Because there's more combinations of swapping these around. Can I swap these? Oh yeah! 
That's three, so three. Oh, there's four. There's four because I can swap these. And then I can swap these. So that's two, four. There's four. There's four. I'm going to go with this four. 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 Ready? I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I got it right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Woo! I got it right. Woo! That was really fun. I love this. Is this a thing? Calc Doku? I've never heard of, or did Brilliant invent this? I never heard of it before. I want to do more Calc Doku puzzles. I want to make my own Calc Doku. I really have got to make a Sudoku puzzle generator. That would be a wonderful um uh, coding challenge to do. I'll have to find the time to do that sometime. All right. Let me take a very brief break. Um, thank you so much to Brilliant for the sponsorship. Again, uh, please take the time right now, if you have a minute, to sign up for free at brilliant.org slash coding train. Let's them know you found out about Brilliant through the coding train. Um, you can sign up for free. You can do your the Calc Doku puzzle yourself. You can um, offer your own explanation. I guess there's other people who have uh, explained it. Here's somebody, um, Allison Snyder from the staff. Oh, why wow, I can walk through it step by step. Oh, that's really cool. Um, and uh, to unlock everything that Brilliant has to order through a premium subscription, you'll get 20% uh, off through that um, link. So, okay, I'm going to take a short uh, intermission break um, and just to refill my coffee. And then I'll finish with my random number blood dripping. And I got to show some community contributions today. I mean, I can't, I have to do that every Saturday.
No microphone! Oh, I was muted! Oh, hello! It is I, Count Random Number, back from intermission to read to you the random number. 45. Oh my god! 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. <clears throat> It's not going very well, is it? You think maybe I could hire, like, a writer and I could get, like, a... <clears throat> I don't know. Some cue cards? <laughs> Alright, where were we? We were attempting, thank you again to Brilliant, the sponsor of today's live stream. That's probably the last time they'll ever sponsor me again. So thanks for all the times you sponsored me before. <clears throat> 30,479, it's coming to get me. So I want to figure out how to make this better. And after I make it better, After I make it better. Oh yeah, it was, the bit was great muted with the soundtrack. I should, just, I should just mute myself more often. Here, I'm gonna mute myself. All right, I, think I, I think I pulled a muscle in my neck there. So I wanna make this better. It doesn't really, one thing that's like really slowed down because of all the particles and it actually works a little bit better. The popping up of it is definitely a problem. So people are saying fade in. Using the viscous force um, is an interesting idea. I don't think I need a sophisticated formula. Um, like, uh, you know, ultimately, um, I think a terminal velocity would make sense and actually maybe even coming to a stopping point um, would be good. Uh, I'm just curious if I make this even more. So let's let's try a couple things. I want to try the fading um, in, and also I don't know that I actually need to fade the particles because of the way that the background is. Oh, I forgot I'm drawing the numbers, so this this fading in the background is irrelevant. Oh, you know what I should be doing is the numbers should not should be clear transparent there we go this is what i was trying to do that's much better <laughs> that's the effect that i was going for um now i can put this back i knew something was wrong here um but fading in is important this like them popping up is weird um it certainly looks less weird a little later um maybe i all right, so this is a little bit better. Ah. Oh, I did miss your message, Violet. Could you, Violet, do you have permission to post that into the Discord links channel? Hopefully you do. Because <laughs> that's, I mean, uh, that's the best place uh, for me to pull that up. Oh, oh, Violet just did the coding challenge for me. Um, all right, so I'll grab that uh, from there. Um, although I could just like remove my screen and grab it. I guess that's what I'll do. I just don't like to show anybody's chat messages without their permission while I'm live streaming. Um, but I'll download that really briefly. Um, uh, and uh, I'll take a look at that in a second. Um, so, um, but let me go back to what I was doing. So I feel like the fading in is a good idea. Um, I actually don't think that I want them to fade out on their own because I only want to fade them. The truth of the matter is actually, I think that I should just be using fewer of them and not fading it out at all. Um, and I want to be, I think I want to just use the bottom I think this would be most effective with, yeah, here. I think I have an idea. 
I think I actually I think the sort of physics aspect of this was a little misguided. So let me do this in a different way. Let me take this out completely. Um, let me just do one. Let's have each particle start with a lifespan of one. And in update, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to add also a direction. Let's try fading it in. I don't know if fading it in is really what I'm looking to do here. Lifespan plus di uh, plus equals dir. If this dot lifespan is greater than or equal to 255, dir equals negative one. So this will work, and then when it gets down below zero, oh, I'm not removing the particles. Um, so what? There's probably like a filtering thing I can do. Particles dot filter. Um, I keep it if it's not dead. Is that what I do? I think that's what I do. And do I need to set the array equal to it? I think this, right? So I want to filter out the ones that I don't want anymore. Uh, what did that do? DIR is not defined. <laughs> I said that in the exact same intonation as firework is not defined. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm going to do this dot, this dot. That's, yeah, I thought it was going to say firework is not defined there. Um, this dot DIR. This dot, this dot, this dot. Okay, so this is definitely looking more promising with the fading in, uh, but I, uh, I'm not actually drawing it with its lifespan anymore. Let's just see if that helps. It's fading in very, very, very slowly. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, and. But this is very streaky. I like that. Uh, so the thing about the streakiness is good. It's a, it's a bit much here. Um, the fading in should happen much, much faster. So let's just try like 10 times as fast fading in. Um, should R be one? So the dripping is much too, uh, and maybe actually is what I want to do uh, less about a continuous sequence and more about um, just having a fixed number of them. Right, so this, this is kind of like what I was going for, what I've got here. I don't like how they appear. Well, that's fine. Um, the problem is the number is so correct looking. I wonder if I should actually draw the, the number. Um, like what if I also do this? Like instead of drawing the image, let's draw the number. Uh, like what if I, sorry, sorry for a uh, stroke, uh, stroke 255.00 point uh, spots index i dot x. So this is, this is not what I want to do because it's just literally drawing all of them as points. But if I give it a little bit of noisiness to it, um, so if I were to say uh, like offset these a little bit maybe, actually let's do it a different way. Uh, this is maybe like a weird direction that I'm going in, but I kind of want it just to all first look a little, um, and 
Let's actually pick a random one each time. So let me do it this way. I'll do the same number of spots, but uh, then what if I were to do this? Offset dot X. So I just want to offset them all a little bit. Um, multiply that by two, stroke weight two, and give this a little alpha. Whoa, it's taking a long time. Uh-oh, oh no, I think I might have crashed myself into an infinite loop. Or is it just like taking forever to render this? Okay, stroke weight was expecting no more than one arguments. Oh, that's stroke weight. Why did that take so long? Let's just start with a hundred of them. Okay, so that is yeah, thousand. Oh, look at that. Ah, it's just got a lot of spots. So maybe I wanna lower the resolution here for a second to four and do a stroke weight of four. Yeah, this is good. So why are they all, oh no, I don't wanna, yeah. That, this is good. This is more, the number is sort of like, you need to drop drops to break off from the streaks. I don't know what that means. A spookier font would help. Yes. <laughs> uh, the font is too big, a spookier font, yeah. And so the other thing is like, Let's make the step size two. It's gonna take a while. Uh, that's a little bit better. Yeah. But I think rather than that, if I make the step size four, do the offset a little bit bigger and do just twice the number of spots. Whoops. What did I do wrong here? Oh, there's a parentheses there, okay. Cannot read X of undef, oh, oh, I still have the, uh, I wasn't doing the random ones. I want it to be random, which is a little silly, but yeah. So I wonder if I use like a little image texture or make this much bigger. Like it's kind of silly now. Like I should go back to having this be, um, just in the center. Let's try doing this 256. Like, I don't really need this to be at the top. Um, and maybe this needs to be like 800. Now go back to this 800 by 600. Just want this to be a little bigger. Ooh, I got to change both of these. Remember how this was going to end up being like a jack o' lantern design? I'm not sure if I really. So, all right, this is much better than, uh, than this is getting better. There's no significance to this number. So first let's make this a uh, uh, random up to 100,000 because that's what the random number book, floor it. And let's uh, let's do that. So it should be a different number now each time I run it. But it should always have five digits. Number format, number format, num, comma five. So hopefully. Okay, so we're gonna get a new random number each time. Now I think I could improve the blood dripping. So I think having it be a larger circle that shrinks Changing the background image is a good idea. The color could be something more bloody. So let's, but I, my idea right now is to have uh, a this dot R of like four and then this dot R minus equal 0 0.1 or something like that. Uh, <laughs> I guess when it gets, below, oh, below zero. So uh, maybe I should do map 
this dot lifespan, which goes between zero and 255 to between one and four. Could I do that? Oh boy, little, little zoinks. Oh wait, I still have this in here. Ah, that was weird. Okay, what's going on here? What's going on with the lifespan? Starts at one, direction is 10. So if it's greater than 255, it becomes negative one. Oh, and maybe I need to set it to 255. No. Shouldn't it now go down and then eventually go past zero? <laughs> Wait, why is my thing, why are these particles getting so large? Map, oh, minus equals. No, 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 that's why, that's the mistake. So they're getting, yeah, that's good. It's so, it's all too perfect though, right? It needs to have more variety to it. So I think that there should be, this should be uh, a random value between two and five, uh, R max. And then, so this should be R max. And then um, this should help. And this dot r equals, let's make it zero for right now to start. Hmm. Oh, this dot r max. Sorry, I need to make the font a little smaller. So I just don't have enough space to work with here. Okay, that's getting better it's pretty spooky looking this is looking pretty good actually they look bubbly right i need to like fill that in more so maybe this where i'm drawing them here uh let's just see what happens if i make this eight still kind of bubbly how do i i guess i could use i probably want like some sort of texture um How do I make them? I guess, I guess I could just go, maybe I want to go through all the spots so I don't leave any of them. And let's go back to two, right? Oh, but I'm, I've got the step size. Um, Better. I mean, what I really want to do is go over it like four times. Uh, I modulus spots dot length. Yeah. The radius should increase instead of decrease. Yeah, they look like spikes. Or maybe it should just be random. Let's have a look at uh, what Violet did. <laughs> uh, where was this? Uh, did it download to here, yeah. Let's have a look at what Violet did. Ah, I like this. So this is using that uh, fire effect. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> I'm pleased that this isn't like a million times better than what I did <laughs> just because I was feeling very inadequate for how I'm getting this to look. Um, so let me come back to this. I think the, I think one thing that might work well is, um, I realized the spikiness is kind of weird. 
I wonder if actually doing them a little bit uh, now, like 10 at a time here, might actually be kind of nice. Like, and then like it's just getting overwhelmed with particles. Uh, so it's better to limit it. Um, but I do like the idea of sort of seeing it a little bit at a time. So I could say here, if spots.length, well, let's count. Uh, oh, I could just say if frame count. If uh, frame count is less than 100, I want to finish this up. Like people will make a much better version of this eventually. Change the shades of red by the radius. Fade the particles. Have some stop shorter than others perhaps. So the stopping shorter than others should sort of work by the mere fact that they're all starting at random locations. Make the last iteration bigger. So many interesting ideas here. <laughs> I think that I should stop here and people are going to make much better versions of this. What I wanted to look at is how to make this into something that you could carve into a pumpkin. So actually, <laughs> I think I want to move on to that. Um, and yeah, it should track like a rain droplet on a windshield. So once again, it's the same URL. I'm going to link this. Uh, let's do this. Um, if uh, what would be great is if uh, I think everybody should play around with this and see if you can get it to improve, and I'll and then you could share back. Um, uh, I guess I could put, make a page for this. Here's an old one, but the drops are more likely to spawn at the bottom from Bopple Apple, and then maybe I could collect them if somebody could sort of collect a few contributions um, in a in a way that I could retrieve them. <laughs> Maybe a GitHub issue thread. Um, then I can look at a few um, variations of this. But I want to actually move on because I would like to carve. <laughs> I would like to see if I can make something where you could carve your the contours of your face into a pumpkin. And I have a very very specific idea of how to do this. Um, so let's let's put this aside and save it. I'm gonna hit stop. That's like as far as I'm getting with this today. I think, and I just want to do the following. You're going to see, you're going to like this. Uh, let's make a video. 640 by 480. Actually, let's make it smaller. 320 by 240. Um, and I'm going to say a video equals create capture. Um, 320 to Oh no, video. This is how you do it. Create capture video. Video size 320 to 40. Um, and let's just try this. Image video zero zero. So I'm making a uh, you know Jack O Lantern filter. Allow using the camera. Okay. So now we see I have the video image right here. It's actually nice that I have a green screen. <laughs> this will make this work really well. The video image here and then the raw video and then drawing into the canvas because what I want to use is use this filter function threshold and I'm just going to say 0.5 right now. Let's see what I get. So what this is doing is it's taking the video and applying a threshold filter to it. So every pixel is by definition can only be drawn as black or white and then and based on a given threshold of brightness. So one thing that I think would be useful would be for me to have a slider. I'm gonna say slider equals create slider. And the range is between zero and one. I'll start with 0.5 and the uh, step size will be 0.01. I have a memory of doing this very recently. I don't know. Um, um, so now, uh, and you could do this with anything. It doesn't have to just be your video. Um, and now, um, 
I need to say uh, slider dot value. Let's just make sure this works. So now I have a slider and I can change that threshold, which is gonna be very, very useful for me in terms of calibrating what I want it to look like. Okay, but I need, there's a lot more that I need to do this. I'm gonna use the marching squares algorithm. I think that's gonna really work with this. We're gonna see. Uh, I could blur it and all sorts of things, but I think I wanna use the marching squares to get like some contour, like cutting contours, I think. Blob detection I could use. I'm not really sure. <laughs> let, 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 I'm go, let's go with me here. I do think it would be useful to know the threshold value that we like. So I might also say let slider div um, and let's do uh, let's slider span. I'm not really sure. Um, slider div equals let's just actually create a span slider val. Let's just call it that. Slider val equals create span slider dot value and then always update it slider val html slider dot value so this is all p5 dom stuff and i guess i should move this over a little bit um can i work with a bigger video will that fit because i think that would be nice let's do width and height although the video actually probably should be smaller and then i should stretch it up um, and now I don't have the slider, of course. See, this is why I didn't want a bigger video. <laughs> let's go back to, uh, let's actually, let's do this. Let's make that smaller and then stretch it larger. Cause I wanna have more pixels to work with when I have the algorithm. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, so now I can find, and probably uploading an image would be better here. You can find sort of like a good threshold I mean, wearing this costume is really messing it up. I love how the coding train here is like so perfectly uh, thresholded. That could be coding train, like you making a coding train like logo design. You could use the same sort of technique. Um, but I thought what I would try to do here is go and get uh, the marching squares code because this might make it much more, whoops, much more contoury. Um, and so what if I get, there's a bunch of different, oh, image. I actually already did this, I forgot. So great, this is per, webcam. I did it with webcam already. Oh, interesting. So let's, I forgot that I made these versions of it. Uh, let's just see what we get here. Yeah, so I'm kind of imagining that, uh, <laughs> that this is gonna work. Hmm. So let's, interesting. So what am I doing here in this? I have a draw line. I have a threshold value. I'm setting the pixels, drawing. Oh, that's just drawing it. And then, boy, based on this threshold of the field is are the pixels. I'm so confused. The field is the brightness of the pixel, which is easier for me to do once I'm thresholding it. So let's grab... Um, this, so maybe, I don't know if the marching squares is gonna help me here, but I'm grabbing the marching squares. I'm going to, let's leave this fire effect one. I'm going to here. No, this is the number blood dripping one. How come I can't find what I'm doing? Now, here we go. So let's create the marching squares field. The resolution I'm gonna way, way lower because I think that's gonna be needed for getting the sort of contours effectively. And I might need to like also blur the image. Um, then I need to create, I guess this is creating the 2D array. Um, so let's, that's gonna happen in setup. That's the sort of field of numbers for the marching squares. Um, then I need this draw line function. And obviously you'll need to watch the marching squares video to see what's going on here. Now, this is what's different. Um, if I go, whoops. If I go through here to set the field, this is where I can do something different. 
So, hmm. In draw, I'm loading pixels, but I want to load the pixels from, sure, this is fine. Let's, let's just use the canvas as is after drawing the image and filtering, okay? Going through the columns and rows times the resolution. This is fine. Uh, spooky, John Pearson, thank you. <laughs> spooky variable name and methods names today. That's a good idea. <laughs> spooky, I'll, I'll try to incorporate that. I love that idea. Um, so I don't, this I don't need to do. I can just pull out the red value of the pixel because I've thresholded it. And I need to work with the video width. So this is going to be important in a little bit. Uh, the video, let's, let me go back to having them be the same size because then I can go back to differentiating that. Uh, get the, just get the brightness is um, the uh, pixels at that index value uh, times four, right? And I'm drawing a rectangle, that's fine. Let's do that. Let's just sort of see what happens here. Okay, so this is, this is thresholding it <laughs> and then putting the lower resolution squares, but I got a weird error. Brightness was expecting, oh, I don't need this. Okay, great. So this is uh, um, sort of lowering the resolution so I could do the contours. And then, uh, and then if um, I go to here, this should draw the marching squares. <laughs> Where's the, yeah, well, yeah. I don't, maybe I didn't need the marching squares, but I really think that I do. Uh, and draw a line, let's make it red right now. Just to sort of see, what did I get wrong here? Um, get state is not defined. So I, there's a get state function. Ah, here we go. That I need. Okay. So it's drawing, the, I'm imagining these to be the cut lines, but obviously I don't see anything at all resembling my form. <laughs> Can I make, boy, this, thought, this sounded like a good idea at the time. <laughs> so I definitely need higher resolution. So I want this to be 640 by 480, um, which means, which is fine. Because the vi because what I'm actually analyzing are the pixels of the filtering. That's great. Then I want the resolution to be like 10. Let's just see what I get here. Yeah. But it looks weird. Oh, I'm something is way off. Yeah, because I'm looking at the video pixels, which don't. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Okay, okay, quiet down over there. Um, we're, at, we're at noon o'clock, people. What's, what's not matched? Pixels of the index, which is, ah, this. There we go. Okay. Better, but okay, now I can play with the threshold. And uh, let's. So I actually don't want to draw these rectangles. That sort of defeats the purpose of what I'm doing. I also want to be very close. And I think that I want to blur the image. That's sort of weird idea here to make myself sort of more ghost like, which might sort of blur things. Uh, that didn't work. Oh, 
God, zero. Don't put a zero there. Okay, that, that was a bad idea. Uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I can't do that. I need a separate canvas if I'm gonna do that. Filter, blur. Let's just try this. And this it's gonna make it run super slow. But in a way, I only need to do a snapshot. Yeah, there we go. Now the question is, okay. So first of all, my outfit here and the double glasses and wearing this like cape thing and the hat. Oh, my hair is a mess. Uh, and now I can play with the threshold. <laughs> well, <laughs> this idea kind of failed. <laughs> but at least what I want to show you is... Um, Uh, and it's very slow because of the blur, but I kind of what I wanted to do here is say background 255. I don't want to actually see that and then have this be stroke zero. Just wanted to see it like this. But yeah. Well, <laughs> this is like such a failure. I thought even with the green screen, this would work so well. Um, let's see. Thresholding. So what, anybody have any, I mean, there is something here to this. Like that is kind of me, but I'm not high contrast. And the, obviously what the threshold is, you know, I should probably make use of the fact that there's a green screen and have that. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Blood dripping now from this. This is kind of interesting. Idea. I, I want to take the blur out just because it's really slowing it down. And I probably should like, when I, I want to just save it. Yeah, I mean, because this, then, because also why not just make the resolution much, much lower? Yeah, oh, there we go. Now I'm getting somewhere. I just need to make the resolution lower. I mean, the, uh, I need to do blob detection and then like filter out these like lower ones. That's what the, the tiny ones, the noise, that's what I thought blurring would do. What if I have an idea? What if when I hit mouse pressed, uh, render equals false, I set render equal to true. And then if render run the blur and then at the end if render save frame jack lant o lantern it'll save it with a number dot png and then render is false so basically i'm able to operate this super fast um but when i rend when i click the mouse it'll render it with the blur on so let's see how low can i get this resolution with it being quite speedy like it is like at what point yeah so i think four was a good number and I should get the I should get the interpolation code in here. That's also going to make it better. Let me grab that interpolation code. Uh, arching squares, metaballs interpolation, open simplex interpolation. It doesn't really matter. Let's grab this one. So the interpolation I think was just a change. here Ooh, I think oh this is a little scary All right I think the interpolation code which smooths out the contours 
is just this particular loop. So I think, let me hit save and let me go back to this loop here. I think all I need to do is paste in this version of it. Shoot. Uh, do I need another curly bracket here? I think so. Oh, is it gonna make it run super slow? Ooh. Oh, I did something bad. Use a Sobel filter. Ah! <laughs> okay. Did I save it with the, uh, yeah. Yeah, hold on. So let's go back to like a high, what did I do? Columns. Maybe just all the extra math for the interpolation. Oh, the threshold. That's weird. Is this the interpolation? Let's make sure the interpolation one is working. Yeah, this is what I was looking to add to it. This is the interpolation. Um, threshold equals one. Oh, was the threshold? Oh, the threshold being one. Why did I have that? Ah! What's going on, people? Why is why is the threshold one? Oh, oh, because it it calculates it. I'm so lost. Is this what I pasted in? No, I didn't get the interpol. Oh no, this is the non-interpolation. Okay, I'm back. Let's make the, I just want to, I, 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 this was, this is possibly unnecessary, but let's make it like, let's lower that resolution. Should be super fast now. Okay. I just want to add the, try adding the interpolation in, which should be just a matter of replacing this with all the lerpy stuff. I don't know why that's crashing. That is very disturbing. Uh, that it like that my example with I just feel like the smoothing it out will be nice and if I could just get that to work I could put my hat back on so you don't have to experience my hat head oh look at interpolation get state code that changes also no it's the same it's just this loop It's hard for me to tell because it's so low. It doesn't seem like it worked correctly. Oh, I'm assuming the values in field are between zero and one, I think. No, I guess I should give up on the interpolation. I should probably give up on the interpolation, right? Because it doesn't seem to translate here. I had two, it, uh, it's so weird though, what is? Did I change the way I'm getting the field of numbers? Oh, I normalize, no, no, that's just for the bubbles. Oh, this one's using distance. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No wonder, this is like a kind of a different example. Let's go to this one. This is what I want. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is what I want. Right, this is the one, this is more analogous to what I'm doing. So let's try this one. And I think the values in the noise are between negative one and one. So I might have to change something. 
Uh, this was getting get state, which is the same. Ceiling field. Ah, because it's either a zero or a one. So what I want to do is round it. I want to round it in mine, I think. So instead of ceiling, I think I want to round it. Oh, but not here. I think this is going to work. Where does it do that? Huh? Did I, I, did I not paste it into the right place? Yes, I did not. I pasted it into the wrong place. Oh, I'm doing, this is so hard. No, come back. Yes, this one. This loop, uh, this is like the longest bit of code to copy paste, which is making this very difficult, goes here. And then I wanna change this to round. I give up. This should give me a, no, it's always gonna do a float in JavaScript. <laughs> no one's telling me what I'm doing wrong here. <sighs> Try changing the res back again. All right. Try changing the res back again. 12. Yeah, it's, I don't see the interpolation happening. It does the draw line function different? No, right? So by the way, as I make the resolution lower and lower, the interpolation is less meaningful. So I think I'm gonna get, go. I'm just gonna go back to what I had. Let's refresh this page. Oh, whoops, I'm in here. I hope I don't lose my code. I'm doing the worst job. Of, oh boy. <laughs> you're out there all twice. No one's telling me what I'm doing wrong because you're twice. I, this was a, a, a bad digression and it's 12.15. I'm gonna give up on it. It's so not important. Let me just go to, I'm, let me go to view code, which is easier than working with the web editor to copy paste. And let me just get the regular non-interpolated one back. Cause that was fine. I didn't need to change it. And let me go back to the resolution is four. Everything's gonna be fine. Oh, I forgot that I did the B divided by 255. There we go. Okay, this is what we're working with, people. I don't need to interpolate because I've got like a really sort of high resolution image. So let me try to get my face. Oh, whoops. <laughs> so I need a button. <laughs> I definitely need a button. Uh, let's create a button. Save button equals create button render. And then save button mouse pressed. Uh, um, and let's just put an anonymous function in here that says a render equals true. So instead of this global mouse press, only when I press the button, because I, I need to press the mouse to move the slider. <laughs> okay, so um, I can play with the threshold. I don't know, what looks the most like me? Let's see what happens when I press render. Okay, I got an error. Save frame is not defined. I guess that's processing speak. Uh, 
I should just make it a random number. Let's just do. Let's just let's just call it jackalanter.png for right now. Let's try this. All right. Let's take a look at what this image looks like. Is it better? Well, it's different. <laughs> there, carve this into your jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> detection and marching squares uh, well i think if i had a cleaner image <laughs> um so one thing that we could do with this is for example um let's instead of let's let's do this so for example let's grab a coding train character speaking of which where were we were on the uh faq let's go to uh the go coding train things. Let's download uh, characters, um, emoji size, uh, 320 by 320. Like for example, let's say we wanna carve this character into the pumpkin, okay? Now, first of all, just printing this out would probably be enough because <laughs> you can trace the contours, <laughs> but let's just try it with my methodology. Uh, download. And Let's now go to here. Where where am I? Close this is not what I'm looking at. This is not what I'm looking at it's here. So let us do a, um, let's create, um, let's create a file input. I think it's create file input, is that right? Yeah, so I'm gonna add something that I could choose a file and then there's like a callback here, like got file. Let's see what I get. I forget how this works, so I'm rather than look at the documentation, <laughs> I'll just figure it out. So if I go to choose file and downloads and I get this character, I get file, it's of type image, and I, oh, I get the I get the data, the pixels of the image in something called data, perfect. So, um, and then I can replace the video. Let's do let image. So if, If image, draw the uh, image, else draw the video. So if I'm, I'm going to make it so that if I upload an image, it's going to draw that instead. Um, and so now in the got file function, I should be able to say like if image dot, let me just look at it over here. Uh, I guess I'll look at it here. If image dot type, yeah. If image dot type equals, oh, if data, I guess like file. <laughs> if file dot type is image. Oh, I gotta show some community contributions. <laughs> if file dot type is image, then uh, image equals create image image dot data a file dot data. Let's just see how this works. So choose the file now. Try this character. Oh, whoa! <laughs> what is going on? Insanity! I think there's a lot of noise in that PNG. <laughs> but look at this, you've got the contours now. Oh, I really want the interpolation to work. Somebody will fix that for me. This actually is very Halloween-like. <laughs> Wait, why did it do this? Oh, because of the blur, no, I'm not blurring. Okay, well, let's, let's play with the threshold here. There's some kind of noise in the background. 
Is it from stretching it? Like, I don't understand this at all. The PNG has transparency. That must be it, right? It must be that the PNG, no, but the video's not being, oh, the video, the PNG has trans, I got it. I don't know if I need a white background or a black background, but there we go. <laughs> because I'm operating off the pixels of the image I'm drawing, so there we go. Now, why did I get create image was expecting to? Oh, right. So it needs a um, when you create an image, it always should have an alt uh, text tab. So, like, I'm just going to call it like uploaded file from a user. To get rid of that message uh, for accessibility purposes. No. Nope. Data is not defined. Where? Line 42. Oh, yeah, I don't need this. Okay, great. So now, there, any image, and I can play with the thresholding. So I can take any image. So, for example, and I don't know why I can't get the interpolation to work so that it's not so... Uh, so that it's smooth, but somebody will help me with that. Uh, so let's grab, let's just say, um, let's try like Googling my image. And maybe, like if I take this, uh, uh, let's take this, and then now, Let's go back to here and we choose another file. Oh, did I put that on the desktop? No, where did I save that? Does anybody remember? Save image as, oh, who knows where I put it? Desktop, downloads. Try this. There we go. See, we're getting somewhere. So now I can play with the threshold. Uh, and then I feel like this looks like a bit more. And if I had a much more thoughtfully lit photo of myself, like there we go. Now, and now I can hit save, render. And let's see what I get. Uh, so I probably. I guess maybe I want to put the blur, I, the blur option I, I might want to take out now. I want the interpolation and the blur working. This, why do I have that Tom Scott, Scott folder? I will get to that. So, uh, great. So this works. I'm going to put this in the Discord. Uh, this is as far as I'm going to get with this. People can improve upon it. <laughs> and I might try to get something. Um, let me go back to the um, links. I guess, this, is this the same sketch? I'm not sure. Um, in the Discord, I'm putting this here. So this is the sketch right now. Oh, I'm, you don't see me. This is the sketch uh, right over here that I'm working with. So you can grab the code from there. And you'd see, by the way, it shows the images down here that I'm uploading. Um, or I, you know, I could have a much better interface to this, but you could imagine how this could help you create something that you could then print and then tape onto your pumpkin and draw around. Now there's gotta be a better image of me. I mean, actually it doesn't need to be me. Uh, coding train. Like I could try any number of these things, images. I could design something, I could try this. Like let's, uh, let's use this. Oh, I don't know what, uh, so like if I took this save image as uh, coding train. And it's going to stretch it weirdly because I'm not taking into account the resolution. But let's choose the file. Let's go to this one. And then, you know. <laughs> kind of like this. There you go. Uh, anyway, I could make this much higher resolution. I could make this in processing. But this now, I feel like this is sort of carvable. Right? This is carvable, although there's a lot of weird, like, I don't know how you would carve this. But you could, 
you know, you could sort of see some of these enclosed. You could carve this out and then, go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> this, this, I don't understand how you carve this. Because <laughs> there's actually like enclosed shape issues. Oh, well. Well, well, well. Close enough. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Now, before I go from this spooky coding train, which it's now 1230, I've really got to go. It's really, I really should. It's time for me to look at at least one or two community contributions from you, the viewer of the viewers of the coding train. Uh, usually I do this at the beginning. You are what makes you, you are the energy that powers the coding train. And I would love to feature some of your work. Um, and the way that I go and do that. By, by the way, if you get any of what I'm doing today working better, and the idea here was that I would get like the blood dripping number and then get the contours, and then that I would use to carve a pumpkin. <laughs> I'm, there's pumpkin carving is starting in two minutes in this house, and I got to go down and participate in that. But um, if you want to help, give me hey, carve your own pumpkin and share it with me. But uh, if you want to help clean up my code and make it a little better <laughs> and give me a pumpkin design, I will carve it on a pumpkin. It might be a small pumpkin because I don't have a lot of pumpkins, but I will carve it using this pumpkin carving kit. So. Uh, but before I go, I, I've got to show some community contributions. So, let's go and find the wheel. Here is our wheel of community contributions. Um, by the way, thank you to, um, there is a viewer. I don't know if you're watching. Please shout yourself out if you're watching who created an API to grab random coding train contributions from the website. I don't believe that this is using that yet, but I would like it to be. Let's spin this wheel. What are we going to get? Ray casting game with Maze Generation. Uh, this is from Grilly86. The original coding challenge is rendering ray casting, which you could uh, take a look at. It's this coding challenge, which sort of like in all using just total 2D rendering techniques to create a sort of old style ray casting scene, um, system that then generates this 3D-ish scene. And let's look at, uh, oh, and I have another coding challenge that's maze generation. So this is combining them. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this. <gasps> wow, this is wild. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, and I don't see the maze. What are, what's my, what do I have to press? Oh, I turn. <gasps> I need to find, oh, I can walk this way. Oh my God. This is um, insane and so cool. And I'm walking through the maze. <gasps> Oh, I love this so much. Amazing job. Can I keep going? Let's get to the end of the maze. Wow, what a cool uh, combination of these two examples. I'm lost. No, I think I got to it. Where, where do I go? What did I miss? Can I go further this way? No, oh, but I can go this way. Oh, that's a dead end too. I've already tried this. By the way, is this like, there's a secret command, I think, for like revealing the maze. I seem to remember looking at this before, but I guess I got to turn around. This is a spooky maze for sure. No, this way. I must find the end of this maze. I must get out of here. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Oh no, there's there's another way. There's another way. There's another way. I found another way. I'm going to go all the way to the end here. Could this be the way? No! I've hit a dead end, I'm, I think. <laughs> I must get out of this face. No, I went the wrong 
wrong way again. I can't do it. I would like, by the way, for this circle <laughs> to be a shape that when I rotate, I see which way it's pointing, or for the rays to be a more distinct, higher color contrast. That would really help me. <laughs> I think this is the way. This is the way. I have spoken. The maze has spoken. Be it. No, 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 no. Go back. No. No! No! What did I miss? Was it all the way back at the beginning? Is this another way to go? <laughs> and so everybody was tuned in like four hours later and I was still trying to get through this spooky maze spooky maze spooky <gasps> this way no that's the beginning which way am I? Which way am I looking? I can't tell. Okay, this way. <gasps> Wait, no, this isn't it. <laughs> Where do I go? I go is that a way no that's down up to the right that's a wall what did I miss oh is it here is this a path is that the path <laughs> this is terrifying and so we looked at one no this is the second community contribution to backtrack. No. Why? Why do you keep zooming out? Where do I go? This way? Boy, I really... Did I get unlucky here or am I just really bad at mazes? Straight shot from here. Is it just straight down this corridor? Is that really what it is? No. No! has won the maze challenge. Oh, it gave me another one. <laughs> that was amazing. What a terrific uh, community contribution. Let's look at one more.
travel to the fourth dimension. David Snyder, spookily, has created a hypercube based on the hypercube coding challenge. This is a fitting way to end. Where's my... My Blair Witch uh, simulation. <laughs> Alright, this is great. I like to see this hypercube render. This looks like it's being rendered actually in um, with a 3D render. I guess that's, is that how I did it? I can't even remember what I did, but I love the hypercube as like, a, and there's a really amazing um, um, video about hypercubes. That's not my video, but from the, the, the LeOS uh, YouTube channel. And I'm sure I referenced in my challenge and my uh, video. It's amazing. Um, all right. I was looking for my, um, phone, which I don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is, which I can now connect to say goodbye. Um, let's see if I can do this. I just, I'm so excited by the fact that I now have the ability to, and hold on, I'm waiting for it to connect. Connecting to your computer over Wi-Fi, it has connected. And now if I go here, we can see, there we are. All right, everybody. Um, I think this is how I will finish things out um, by talking to the camera here. Um, <laughs> make it stop. Yeah, I made it stop. Um, and so Simon wants me to remind you, I mean, this was an idea that I, not, oh, I mean, it's not an idea that I had, but let's see if we can figure out. I wanted everybody to go from the coding train over to this 24 hour math stream. Um, so uh, I don't know why I'm doing this here. Let's just go back to this feed. <laughs> Much more comfortable this way. Um, I was not going to do my Blair Witch shtick anymore. So let me play my old timey goodbye music. Although, you know, really, we should keep with the spooky theme. So if you would, please, let's go find it. Uh, how do I find the math magic 24 hour stream? Here it is. Oh, uh, let's see. Let me go. I'm going to. Oh, is it over? It says it's finished seven hours ago, what I'm looking at. Part two. Oh, there's a part two. <laughs> 14, 15, 16, okay. 17, 18, Whoa. 19, 20, 21, 22, So right 23, now. 24, 25, 26. Are you happy that's half the deck? This is the stream. I'm happy that's half the deck. Okay, so, so there's uh, 169 people watching right now. I'm going to. Uh, paste this link into um, the our Discord, and I encourage everybody, as I say goodbye, to head over to the 24-hour uh, math magic show. Um, say hello there from the coding train. You can put so I don't don't interrupt. I know there's a thing on Twitch where people do these raids and they like all like flood the chat with like train emojis would be the thing but i think that might be interrupting their flow so just go over and say hi from the coding train i guess and then join um uh very join nicely um stay tuned for my videos that are coming out on how to make a discord bot um check out the zoom annotation video if you haven't checked that out um also the convolutional neural network image classification video is coming out and um oh my battery on my uh soundboard which has to be plugged in, died. It could, I'm gonna need to play some music as I leave. So I'm gonna like put this cable across my lap into here. So hopefully it'll come back alive. I'm seeing if there's any questions. And please, if you are able to use anything I did today to carve a jack-o'-lantern, uh, at Shiftman on Twitter, share it in the Discord, I, uh, um, anywhere, let me know. Or if you just have the design, that you like came from a coding train coding challenge using some of the techniques I showed. Um, send that to me very quickly because I'm now moving on to carving uh, pumpkins. Uh, once again, with uh, this, uh, you know, I'm really, really um, hawking this like uh, Pumpkin Masters, the number one selling brand, uh, who's not officially a sponsor, but there is a sponsor today. Uh, brilliant.org. Just a reminder to check out brilliant dot brilliant at brilliant.org/slash coding train. Uh, Brilliant also has an app, which is pretty terrific that you can use as well. 
All right. Um, my soundboard is coming back to life. Um, and so I'm going to say goodbye. I'm looking to see if there's any chats. Have I heard of Twitter? It's amazing. Yes. Um, uh, that's a that's a way of like within a tweet, like having a snippet of code that then you render. Um, that's super awesome stuff. Um, and I'm getting my soundboard back up. Uh, low battery. That's no problem. And I think my favorite of all of these was this one. So I'm going to just say goodbye with this music. I'm head over to the 24 hour maths magic show um, that I'm featuring right here. I'm going to head over there too as well to say hi in the chat. And I'll uh, see you all next, next Saturday. Vote, vote. If you haven't voted and you're, if you're able to vote, please vote. Um, and I hope I'll be back next Saturday. I, I'm back every, every Saturday in the morning is live streams, tutorial videos coming out during the week. Tutorial recording sessions happen on Friday. If you're thinking about joining as a member, uh, when you join, you'll get to see some of those. You'll be able to get previews of some of the videos and things and all that stuff. Uh, more rows would be nice for a jack-o'-lantern. All right, goodbye, everybody. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot.
lights on. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song, never forget the this dot. Somebody composed that song for me.